Yeehaw, and welcome to the Bear Wasnick Adventure coming to you from Waikiki Beach. We have Catholic cowboy priest Father Bryce Lundgren with us today. We're going to have a great time talking about uh, his new book, The Catholic Cowboy Way. Coming to you from Waikiki Beach here this time of year in the winter. It's normally kind of mellow. The swells, the big uh, swells hit here during the summer on our side of the island. But what's going on here in the island right now is lava is flowing from Mauna Loa. So um, lots of excitement. In fact, we can see out here, though we're 200 miles from the volcano, we can see the VOG uh, kind of resting out over the ocean. So uh, things are kind of excited here in, the, here, in, here in Waikiki. But we'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Today we have with us our, our Catholic cowboy priest, Father Bryce Lundgren. Uh, his new book has just come out called The Catholic Cowboy Way. And, and he sent it to me about, I think, almost a month ago. And I, I couldn't open it because I'm writing a, a book for the same uh, publisher, Sophia Institute, called uh, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? 12 Rules for Manliness. And so I, I, you know, and I'm the one that I think pushed Father Bryce to go to talk to Sophia about doing this book. And this morning I got to read it, and it's just such a, it's just such a, it's just such a great read. And it's kind of funny. Two of his chapter titles are the same as mine. So I think, uh, I think in my heart of hearts, I want to be a cowboy. Most men my age, I always have wanted to be a cowboy, but ca but uh, Catholic cowboy priest Father Bryce Lundgren is the real thing. So, I have my cowboy hat on right now for those of you who are listening on radio or listening to a podcast. But if you're watching on our YouTube Bear Washington Deep Adventure channel, you can see. But I have to take my cowboy hat off now so I can put my headset on so I can hear Father Bryce. So, I instead of saying aloha today, we're going to go yeehaw. Aloha, Father mm -hmm. Bryce. Welcome to the show. Aloha, yeehaw. <laughs> oh man, that bronc riding uh, saddle you have—that's that's just that—that's just for riding a bronco, isn't it? Or what, what is this? This is bron is a bronc saddle, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I was gonna tell you, Bear. Um, you mm. know what the old saying is: is that if you have a hat, you can be a cowboy too. I am a cowboy, man. Well, my wife is a cowgirl. You know, she was a yeah. barrel racing trick rider, ride Roman style. You know, riding on the cowboy on the. She's. I mean, it's when we watch westerns, she always picks up all these mm -hmm. details uh, about the nice. horses and the mannerisms. What nice. was it like that moment when uh, you're you're at a rodeo, and they and they announce that that you're about to ride, but it's yeah. it's not uh, Bryce Lundgren. They announce you as a Catholic priest. Tell, tell us about that. What yeah. was that like the first time you got to well, do that? Well, it, it's hard to tell you in that moment because it's it's uh, it's pretty uh, intense. You're kind of in the zone. I mean, you're, you're just kind of zeroed in. But, yeah, that, that one rodeo I did uh, crack out in my clerics. And, oh, uh, you and did? I, yeah. Mother Angelica would <laughs> be so proud of you. <laughs> it was awesome. But, uh yeah, I was joke, you know, the worst thing about uh, getting bucked off in front of a crowd is out now that every, now everybody knows that I'm bald. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. It you know, nowadays like walking around Waikiki, everybody, all the guys my age are wearing hats. You know, uh -huh. suddenly wearing hats because we're kind of getting thinner up on top. You know, <laughs> but tell me about that. What what about that? Uh, you were riding Bronx, not bulls, but Bronx, right? Yeah, or both. I mean, I both. I love horses and it's yeah. just, it's kind of a, it's not a, I wouldn't say it's been a bucket list, but, um, it's definitely something that's on my heart. And I think, I think now having done it and moved on, I rode in four rodeos, but that summer, um, I think I have, I think I have street credit, you know, yeah, you do. With the Cowboys. <laughs> yeah, you do. But you still have all your teeth though. Oh yeah, I <laughs> nothing got busted I really out. Really, <laughs> never got hurt. My my mom is really glad I've done riding. But. I have a good friend of mine, Christopher Goki, who's uh, was a bull rider, and he, in his heart of hearts, he's always been a bull rider. And we're sitting here having cigars and, and whiskey with my my group of friends here that we get together about once every two months and talk mm -hmm. story. 
have a little whiskey and a cigar and we're talking about I wonder what's harder to do um uh what's the hardest individual sport is it surfing or you know hey chris is coming i wonder what he thinks is it harder to surf or to bull ride and he walks in and we ask him he goes what do i go what is the hardest sport is it surfing or is it bull riding he goes golfing (laughs) (laughs) yeah well i'll tell you one uh kind of fun story so you you mentioned that that rodeo that i i uh rode as father bryce and uh and that does open the book. Uh, but what was kind of neat, so I, I had ridden before, and it, it kind of got around that, you know, there's, hey, there's a Catholic priest riding the circuit a little bit. So no so, cussing um, when you when you land yeah. <laughs> the wrong but way. But anyway, I, so I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm pulling up to the rodeo early, and I had my saddle, and I'm, I'm walking kind of briskly. I got to get there, and so I'm walking by people. And one, one, somebody recognizes me. And uh, they go, oh, you're gonna try again? And I said, no, I'm gonna ride. I'm gonna do it. Yeah. You know, and it, and it can, yes. I kind of spell this out in the book a little bit, but but try is a try is the first step towards failure. Is that right? Yeah. You stole well, that from my I, book too. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get to that. You'll no, but let's hear. That. Let's hear. Tell tell me about that. What you mean by well, try? Well, and I and I I put that in a, in another context, but I will say like. Um, so I, I always say like if you're um, if if you're entering if you're if you think you're going to lose as you enter a battle you will lose right but if you believe that you will win now you've got a fighting chance yeah so then you, then you'll then you'll win even if you lose so like that day I did get bucked off but I didn't lose like, yes. I gave it my all. Yes. You know, if you're if you're thinking about, well, I'm going to try. Yeah. Ah, That's so know, interesting because go for it. In the, in my book, I'm writing about that too. I'm saying to write down your your purpose, your creed. And oh. by the way, my book is called uh, "Where Have All the Cowboys Gone?" Twelve Rules for Madness. Yeah. Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? But in there, I write about how uh, you need to write your creed, like a one, oh. like a little paragraph of what you stand for, and then your purposes, mm-hmm. your goals. And when you're writing these out, I say, do not use the word try. Yeah. Man. Like, I'm going to try not to drink so much. Or I'm going to. No. And when, we, when I was in the dojo back in my martial arts days, the word try wasn't allowed to be said in, the, mm-hmm. in, in there, you know? So. No, it's real. I hate that word. It's a coward's mm-hmm. way out, isn't it? Well, it sets you up for. It's focusing on, it's focusing on the fall as you saddle up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. No, but if you're, if you're, if you're, uh, Focusing on the buckle as you saddle up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, what uh, what context so do you use it in in your book? Because I got to read through quite a bit this morning. But yeah, what co- in, what well, context that, in the book do you use the uh, word try? Well, uh, yeah, I mean a fun example. So in the book, I use a lot of just personal stories to describe these things. Yeah. And where that one really hit home for me was in high school. One of my great mentors was my shop teacher, uh, Mr. Reeker, Doug Reeker, and he he retired the same year that I graduated. And we was it you? Close. Was it because of you that he finally gave up on teaching? Mm-hmm. I don't, I probably drove it to him. I could have been part of it. <laughs> but he, uh, one day we always had to write a, um, we had to fill out a work order before we went to the shop that day to say what we were going to do mm-hmm. so that we weren't just out there horsing around. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do today. So I wrote on this work order, I'm going to try to mount some lights, some driving lights on the front of the bumper of my pickup. Along mm-hmm. those lines, mm-hmm. I'm walking out the door. I, I give it to him, and he looks at it, and he takes his pen. And he goes, "No, you're not going to try. You're going to do." Mm-hmm. And I mean that that has stuck with me. Mm-hmm. And he's he's a continues to be a good friend of mine. But really? those simple little things, it's it's an attitude shift. It really is. I know. Like, and when I've had people who work work when I had my bigger firm, uh, mm-hmm. it, it, the word "try" to me is just like, well, I'm already planning on failing but i'll try to get this done yeah. that type of person doesn't stay I, I mean it's i already know don't ever mm-hmm. don't put don't put any of my confidence in this person mm-hmm. because trying doesn't well you know, like john wayne says and i would forget what western he just says try and don't get the job done son <laughs> so i i think uh you know part of the part of the book i i i write or it's it's kind of it's it's to help catholics practice or it's to help cowboys practice the catholic faith and then it's also to help Catholics discover their inner cowboy. 
There right? you go. So yeah. So it's a lot of it's a lot of those virtues. Um, but I, I you know I quote scripture, I quote country <laughs> music. The one one song that always stands out for me is by Tim McGraw, and it's, the title of the song is uh, I think it's the Cowboy and You. But yeah. he, at the very last line, he says, "We ride, never worry about the fall." Guess that's just the cowboy in us all. So yeah. that's the that's the context that. I use. Yeah. So yeah. if you, I mean, if you're if you're if you're scared about getting bucked off, if you as you as you climb climb in the saddle, like beware because you're going to get dumped. But yeah. if you're just focusing on the ride as you swing mm -hmm. in, then mm -hmm. then we've got to fight and chance. And it's not even just Bronx. This is just yeah. riding a horse. You know, you can't be scared. Oh yeah, I know. When, when yeah, when a horse begins to gallop, especially a horse I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm focused on not falling. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. not good. But, you know, uh, I'll say one more thing before we take this break. When I teach people how to surf, um, one of the, f the second thing I teach them is don't fall. Don't because fall. you'll see it all the time. People are riding their wave, mm -hmm. and uh, they feel like they're going to fall, so they fall. Okay, yeah. And so, I, and so they, when I look at them and say, so the second thing is when you're surfing don't fall and they kind of laugh at me and then Cindy will say no he's being serious don't yeah. fall you fight to keep your balance and fight mm -hmm. to finish that mm -hmm. ride and the surfboard wants to ride so if you just okay. stay with it it's going to help you mm -hmm. and I think that's the way in life too when you're, when you're seeking God's will when, you, when, it, when it's your desire to serve the Lord and to seek God's will mm -hmm. don't fall because the Holy Spirit is there and then the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. wants you to ride mm -hmm. and the other thing is if you ever do fall that's kind of like when you learn your, your best lessons anyway but we're talking oh, with yeah. Father Bryce Lundgren we're going to come back and talk more about his book The Catholic mm -hmm. Cowboy Away which is just, just about to be released so this is the, uh, probably is this your first interview on the book yet? Yeah, it, All right. it is and, it, and it's just super fitting Bear because you were the instigator behind it yeah i was the so gator it's fitting that we do the first interview with each yeah. other we'll be right back with more of the bear wozniak adventure now you can journey with other men on the adventure of a lifetime growing in manly virtue through bears man cave community in our three-year school of manliness join at deepadventure.com better yet you can lead your own sons through the same compelling video, audio, and written content. Can you imagine how much deeper your relationship with your dad could have been? And how much more you could have learned and pitfalls you might have avoided if your dad had a tool like this to help to draw you both into a deeper, life-changing discussion. Now you have a trigger that you can pull that will take you into gritty discussions with other men and with your sons at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on Amazon.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We have as our guest today, Father Bryce Lundgren. I just love this guy, this man, the Catholic mm -hmm. cowboy priest. And you know, uh, our, our uh, website 
uh, deepadventure.com. If you go there, it takes you to the Bear School of Manliness. And the whole three-year curriculum that we have there is cowboy-themed. We have a lot of Father Bryce's homilies intermixed. It's 36 months of lessons on manliness that you can go through as a man with us as other men uh, and be part of our man cave too. But what's really cool is you as a man can take your your sons, I would say, that are 11, 12 years of age and older, they can have their own login and they can go through uh, the lessons that we have. There's like year one, we have about 60 lessons to go through. So just about one lesson a week that it might be a video of Long Ride Home that, that is you know, germane to the subject matter or a, a homily from Father Bryce or a country up from my friend Donald Markham or some written context from my book or maybe Father Bryce let us use his book, some of excerpts from his book. And uh, it's something that you can go through with your sons and you can have a great dynamic conversation with them too. So, um, so we encourage you to go to Bear School of Manliness and sign up for you and uh, we'll get, get, get a membership for your sons too. Father Bryce Lundgren, your book, The Catholic Cowboy Way, how is it subtitled? Finding Peace and Purpose on the Bronx Called Life. And we give a shout out to Charlie McKinley over there at Sophie Institute mm -hmm. Publishing and all the people over there for publishing the book. It's just such a, it's just such a great read. I got to, I was loving it this morning. You're just awesome. going through it today. Yeah. So, um, go ahead. Well, as you, as you kind of introduce their, you know, um, you know, fathers sharing it with their sons, like the, the foundation of the book and, and, the foundation of kind of my mo as a priest and disciple and stuff but it is is sonship and which is our baptismal identity it's the foundation of who we are that god is our father and we are his sons through christ jesus you know and then from there you know we, we you know male and female individual personalities but the father sees an image of his son in us through our baptism but that's who we are that's our foundation and so is it, it, if we live out of that relationship with God as our Father, then we can serve Him in all sorts of ways and stay peaceful, you know. And but but I, I dig this. Is kind of I think this is what the Cowboys bring to the table is they know how to work hard and to have fun, you know. They know how to uh, play hard too, right? Mm -hmm. And there, there's something lighthearted in a cowboy. You know, there's, I mean, the, I mean, the iconic kind of cowboy, right? I mean, there's a lot of responsibility, but there's also something, there's also kind of a playfulness. And I, I kind of, I kind of use those as kind of the two stirrups that, that you know, kind of keep us in the saddle of life is, uh, you know, um, having fun and getting the job done. But it, it stems mm. from our sonship as our relationship with God the Father. Mm. Well, you know, there's a lot of young men out there, a lot of men, uh, who have either been abandoned by their father because their father, well, it's, but there's so many different ways a father can leave their child fatherless. A person, a man who's a workaholic and just isn't there. A man who um, actually leaves the home uh, or was never there in the first place, you know. And we have a lot of fatherless men out there. Um, living in a home maybe where their mother feels betrayed by a man or they, they themselves feel feel left behind by their father. And I remember uh, as a young man for myself too, just my father when I was young was, was very stern. As he grew older and came to know the Lord, he changed significantly and became a Catholic mm -hmm. deacon even. But mm -hmm. the word father to me was a scary word as a young, as, as a young person. As mm -hmm. I grew sure. into that, it, as things change and I grew so how does a, a young man who's been who doesn't really know his father who isn't close to his father uh, who uh, even it's a fearful or a word of that brings woundedness into him how does that person be s develop that sense of sonship with God the Father mm -hmm. yeah Jesus <laughs> it is man it's like so this is the the problem that you described that we're kind of we inherit is this um, tendency not to listen to our father or know how to relate to him, both biologically and then spiritually as well. So in, insert Jesus, you know he he shows us how to do it, and it's kind of my mm. throughout the book. Jesus, he's not just a, an imaginary friend or something out there. He he's our not any he, he's our role model. But he's also a man that speaks to us in our hearts in so many ways. Mm. That's discipleship. But 
but the whole like in my book but the whole program in life i feel like is discipleship mm. following our lord that he can teach us how to be sons and we need to be taught how to be sons he mm. he's the second person of the trinity son father son it's who he is mm. you know so he teaches us how to be good sons and it's only in being a good son that you can be a good father mm-hmm I know as I grew up, I, th- I was afraid that I would not be a good father because I'd had such a, a tough bringing up, and I was afraid to have sons. I thought I'd be a good father to a daughter, but I was kind of worried about having sons because I didn't know how—, how and, and, I, and a lot of my woundedness was there when I was a young father. I, st- I still had yeah, to sort of things out and figure them out. But I know um, as I came to go into, I guess, um, getting bucked off a few times you know, in life, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. and you grow in humility— and you uh, grow into realizing that God, lo- God the Father, I guess I heard it said this way once, God loves you just the way you are, but he loves you too much to leave you that way. Mm-hmm. There yeah, used to yeah. be a saying, there used to be a little button we would wear, the, the, just the, the initials for the words, please be patient with me, God isn't finished with me yet. <laughs> so God has this unconditional yeah. love for us, but he loves us so much that he'll scoop down and begin to lift us up. And awesome. so going back to being bucked off that Bronco, mm-hmm. you know, um, it can be a humbling thing. But get up, brush yourself yeah. off, find your hat. <laughs> yeah. What do I say? The, um, yeah, I, I could say a lot. The, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, I would say like the, in the book, I even say that, uh, you know, that one of the biggest lessons in humility I ever got was, you know, getting bucked off in front of the hometown crowd at the 4th of July rodeo, like, that was a long walk back to my cowboy hat, man. <laughs> but uh, I tell and then you your what, cowboy hat's uh, all crushed up. <laughs> yeah, the you know the cowboy motto or my deal is like the true mark of a cowboy is not whether we get bucked off or not; it's whether we get back back on. Yeah, the 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 dirt teaches us something, you know, and mm. you got you, so we can't be afraid to saddle back up. We learn from the past, you know, it informs the future, and mm. and so we can't get discouraged by. That's how you learn to ride. I mean, the, the first time I got on a horse, I was thrown off. I was four years old. Mm-hmm. I was thrown off three years ago. I was, <laughs> I was uh, on the horse, and then I was looking at stars, and it wasn't even dark out. <laughs> yeah, and it's, the thing hard. is, the thing I guess the purpose is, or the purpose of this book is not necessarily to, um, that you know, I just got to grin and bear it through life. No, it's we learn to ride. Mm-hmm. You know, we learn to to enjoy life and to stay in the saddle, not just be white knuckling it, you know? But I mean, there is the reality that that we do get thrown off or something Mm. in life and, and, and it, it teaches us something, but we have to have the courage to get back on again and to Mm. learn what worked, what Mm. didn't work, you know, Mm -hmm. move forward. Yeah, it's true. I know like, okay, so there's this, I know some horses are different. My wife has taught me, but for me, I like it when a horse walks and I like it when it, I guess, is it loping or galloping? But when there's that trot, when you're just jittering back up yeah, and down, it's, it's yeah. like, but it's kind of like, uh, that's, that's just it. Either you go or you don't go, but don't go halfway. Why, why, yeah. why trot along and just be get, get jarred to death in life, but, <laughs> you know, walk in the Lord. But when it's time to go, you know, then, then put your spurs on and, and, mm-hmm. and kick it into a lope or a nice gallop and, and, and run. And let, and, and as, as GK Chesterton, I believe said, about orthodoxy, uh, it lets good things run wild. So let let yeah. it, let let the let let your life let your life run mm-hmm. wild. And the other thing is when like when I'm teaching martial arts or I'm teaching um, surfing, especially tandem surfing or golfing is another example. When people get it right the first time, they really don't even know what they did. They don't know what yeah. they're doing. They 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 can't repeat it. But when they fall, that's actually when you learn. Oh, okay, this is why he tells me to do that, and that's why I shouldn't do this. And and it's the same thing in our walk with the Lord. We get bucked off sometimes, and we go, mm-hmm. oh, okay, now I know why God had the better idea and had the better way. You know, we're talking yeah, about Father we'll Bryce Lundgren, and the book is called what, Father? The Catholic Cowboy Way. And the subtitle though. Uh, finding peace and purpose on the Bronx called life, and it's going to be released in what month? Uh, February twenty first. Okay, yep. we'll we'll have you back on again in the spring, but we're going to release this early so people can. Sometimes you can uh, you can uh, write it down, and maybe you could go to Amazon and order it early. But yeah, you can find it. Yep, you can find it. Is it on Amazon already? 
Yep, yep. Well, you can pre-order it. Yeah, yeah. So get on there and pre-order it. So mm-hmm. Father Bri- Father Bryce Lunger and the Catholic Cowboy Priest. We're going to talk a little bit more about the Catholic Cowboy Way when we get back with the Bear Wozniak adventure. We'll be right back. This is Daniel the Moon Markham with another episode of Country Up. Death. Some folks frequently walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And I suppose I've brushed death more than most and less than some others. At the tender age of 12, I pulled my cousin, age 10, out of the cold water of the Columbia River. He was a goner. I wept. A year later, my pa, who had just turned 58, died from his third heart attack. I watched him heaving for air on his deathbed. That weren't pretty. Worked as a deckhand on the Columbia River Bar, the graveyard of the Pacific. The Grim Reaper had me in his crosshairs more than once. It was from the same waters as a young man I wrestled three bodies out of the pounding surf on Benson Beach. As a pastor, I was often called to folks on their deathbed. I learned to look forward to those times, strange as that may seem. As death comes close, folks get serious-like about themselves, their lives, and eternity. One such time was with an old farmer by the name of Bob Fredenberg. Now, Bob was a crusty old codger. Whenever he came to town, he was wearing that same pair of tattered and dirty coveralls, always with a servant of cow manure on at least one of his boots. Talk with a loud nasally twang, never a sentence lacking a cuss word or two. I was straight with Bob that day about death and eternity. Bob opened his heart to the Lord that day. As he did, Bob's demeanor in the room changed from the cold pallor of death to the glow of godly light. This is Daniel the Boone Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. We invite our mama bears to join with us at deepadventure.com. You'll have access to all of the Long Ride Home TV shows even before they air on EWTN. Plus, three years of the shareable Ocean Sunrise daily catechism videos. Plus, at deepadventure.com, a 20% discount at our online store with all of our great t-shirts and clothes and books and rosaries and medals and all kinds of accessories. You'll also get an autographed copy of Bear's latest book, and for a limited time, a Catholic biker stuffed teddy bear. All at deepadventure.com. Come on, Mama Bears, let's hear you roar. Did you know that each Saturday morning you can receive the shareable YouTube video version of the Bear Wozniak Adventure in our inspiring weekly newsletter, even before it airs on the radio or hits the podcast apps? Never miss another episode. You can even binge watch Bear's inspiring guests. Think about the impact you can have sharing these videos with your friends. Go to deepadventure.com and click the subscribe button. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. I'm here with Catholic Cowboy Priest Father Bryce Lundgren, uh, whose book is The Catholic Cowboy Way, just coming out right now. And it's a great, it's a wonderful book. It's just a book, you, I mean, I, it's a kind of a book where you, you, you're going to sit down and uh, find someplace comfortable because you're not going to want to get up till you've read it. It's just really a really easily, smoothly, well-written book, but it gets down to the real uh, nuts, nuts and bolts uh, of, of really our walk through life. You know, Father, today, um, in the last few years, the world has gone through a tremendous amount of fear. And uh, in your book, you mentioned something about that emotion. You refer to it as yeah. a bear. Can can you talk? I want to. I'm really specifically talking to the young, young men out there, or maybe men of all age. What about this emotion of fear? How does a cowboy handle that? Yeah. Well, so I guess my, I mean, how to how to handle. It. First, I think you have to identify. And I'm I'm I, I'm writing from experience, and I'm not. I'm mean, necessarily putting exact 
terms on things, uh, somebody else may define it a little bit, but my day, basic deal is that like, um, properly ordered the emotions inform the reason to make a good decision. So fear informs reason, and then reason kind of determines whether it's accurate, there's more to it, or how to proceed. But in our disordered way, often, fear gets the driver's seat. Fear mm -hmm. acts, and then, and then reason is just along for the ride. You know, and that's disordered. So, I mean, so be real, like, yeah, I think you use the bear experience, like, okay, fear is, is good, it's a, it's a, like a, re, it's a, a, a reactory emotion that, you know, it's, it's not meant to, to think, it's meant to act. So if I turn the corner and there's a grizz and he starts running me down, I can't think, I gotta act. You know, I either, I either turn and run or I stop and fight. You know, but I don't, you don't, you don't, you don't want to think in those times. You just act. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's about the only time fear is useful as far as, far as I can see. <laughs> Other than that, yeah. it gets way too much credit in our lives, man. And I mean, how to, I mean, a couple of the ways I, I outline it of what to do with fear. I mean, the biggest one ideal is like the devil sells us partial truths. Cause he's very happy to use fear to help, um, get us out of the saddle, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, but it's it's usually always partial truth. There might be uh, ninety percent truth in what is being sold me, but that ten percent that is inaccurate will get you all fouled up. So my de my big deal is balance. Let the emotion fear come to the forefront. Then balance it with the backdrop of truth, the fullness of truth. Okay, and then if it squares up, act accordingly. But uh, if it doesn't, then no thanks, partner. I'm moving forward. If there's no bear yeah. there, then why be if not? Why yeah, have fear? Yeah. Is, is what you close, say close to, to paraphrase your. Well, though, right now, give give an example of of that because I mean, after COVID and you know, our economy, there's so much for reason. For people are afraid of what's going to happen, and they forget to live right so now like, in this moment. Yeah, I mean, and I is it or what might happen? Probably, yeah, what we've been saying is like uh, two two of the words I hate the most, uh, along with the word try is what if mm. what if what if mm. it's crippling mm. you don't know what the future holds god does i mean we use our reason we, we're prudent i mean if so the example i give if the logical conclusion of me jumping off this cliff is broken legs don't jump but if i'm just fear fearful of the future because it's unknown so what nobody knows the future except god and he's our father who loves us so no matter what you're facing, even if there is something fearful, real. Yeah. So uh, John, uh, John Wayne, his favorite his quote that I mentioned to you is mm. like, uh, fear is being, or what is it? No, he says courage. Courage is being scared to death and saddling up anyway. Courage is bravery in the face of fear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In, in, the, in a, it, you know, it's, but rightly informed, you know, okay, this is what's happening. Prudent. This is what I'm going to do. Yeah, no, we, that's why the reason is so crucial. We let the emotion of fear inform the reason. Then reason makes the decision. Right. Okay, you're right, dude. Like, yeah, that is a grizzly. I'm out of here. Or no, it's just a shadow. Or I'm, I don't know what it is. Well, it's, there's a job to be done. Let's move forward. It's kind of interesting when you cross that threshold of fear, too. Like, I can think of it in terms of like surfing a big wave. You know, mm -hmm. you're out there, you're in the deep channel, there's big surf, you know. Just, just to the side of you where the shallow reef is, maybe you're out a half a mile, and then, and then it comes a point where you decide, okay, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna paddle into that zone, and once you're there, everything changes. Once you've made that decision, and you're there, then you're alive in the moment, and it's interesting. So, a fear like this person that I know really needs to hear, hear, uh, encouragement for me, and, and could really use some prayer. But I don't want to, you know, I, maybe I, it's not good. Maybe he'll take it wrong. Cross the line and say, hey, bro, I'm really concerned about you. What's going on? Let me, can I pray for you? Once you say that first word, it's like you've dropped in on that wave. I'm talking about in the little things yeah. of life, cr reaching across to love on someone and to uh, just open the door to a converse, conversation. But what are some of the uh, lies that you think that younger men are facing these days? You know, that, that, that fear... That's truth mingled mm -hmm. with a lie. What, what would be some yeah. of the examples of that? Well, 
I mean, yeah, I, I think, well, one of them is like, um, the, the society, you know, says, don't be wild, just be tame, dope down, don't be, don't be courageous, just mm -hmm. do what we say, you know, mm -hmm. and that's not in our, our masculine spirit, that's not who we are as men, mm -hmm. we're meant to be wild at heart, in a sense, mm -hmm. in a prudent way, I'm not, mm -hmm. you know, trying to say go crazy, but, but that's who we are, we're meant for adventure, you know, um, so I think, I think, we need good examples. We learn by example. That's what I am. Like I'm, I'm not a self-made man. I'm a product of my environment, both past and present. You know who the people I choose to hang around. So our Lord, very well said. Us. Who you yeah, choose to Lord, hang around? Yeah. He he teaches us by example. But so so you know sometimes we think the Christian life is just about being a nice guy. Like, I don't think it so. It makes me right? want to throw up, Father. I mean, I, yeah. Well, the word nice try. Guy? What did you say? Try. And fear. What was it? And what? Try what if? And then this uh, nice guy. Those are the well, three yeah. things that make me want to throw up. Those. <laughs> no, I was no with much. the guy yesterday golfing. Father, beautiful young man, has a new baby, and is and and and, and he and he's working hard to overcome a lot in his life. He's faced t adversity beyond what we could know. Mm -hmm. And every now and then on the golf course, he cussed, and he would always he would apologize to me, and I would just say I, I won't say his name, but I would say. I would just say, man, you're, you are such a good man. You are a good man. You know, maybe yeah. a good man cusses every now and then, but you are a good man. And I just kept affirming that. Yeah. So this nice guy, it's not, it's not nice to do that, and it well, would be better if he didn't, but he was a good man. So nice guy, try, and what if. What if? Those three yeah. things make yeah, me got, just throw up. <laughs> yeah. so, so my deal is, like, I think we kind of get the, the, we do, we get the Christian life wrong if we think it's about being a nice guy mm -hmm. i don't i don't write this in the book but um so think of think of put ourselves in the apostles shoes our lord sent them across the sea right and he knew good and well that a storm was going to rise up you know <laughs> he, i didn't think about that God, right <laughs> so he sent them on this adventure knew that they were gonna like encounter adversity it's not like following christ is like a an easy ride. It's an adventure. Mm -hmm. We want that. Yes, and so he sends them across. Well, he knows he knows that the waves are going to come up. He knows mm -hmm. that you know they're going to they're going to face this adversity and be fearful. Mm -hmm. But he like teaches them how to be courageous in in um, in face of adversity. But so what the do two you... words mm -hmm. I use to describe you know there's one chapter I has that you know the the church needs more cowboys, right? Yeah. yeah. And, the, and the two kind of virtues I highlight that I highlight of the cowboy way that are good for the Catholic way are uh, courage and confidence. Mm. So I've been talking about courage. If you break the word confidence down, confidere means with faith or, or trust, with faith or trust. So we're not just mm. confident in thin air and we're not just wild men. No, we're faithful we believe in christ we can walk on water when we keep mm -hmm. focused on him you know in the midst of those storms so i mean he's he's everything like we're nothing if we're not following him he's where we get our confidence he's where we get our courage but he mm -hmm. also shows us how to do this he mm -hmm. teaches us how to be men and, and and in that you know so what would be more scary the storm or seeing jesus walking on water you know yeah, the they thought it was ball. a ghost but then but then he was a ghost but then but from that confidence in him and moving on in that adventure mm -hmm. the confidence is different than faith um in that confidence comes from competence it comes okay. from it comes from going on that adventure mm -hmm. and saying oh i can do this i can ride this bronc i can do i can i can ride this horse so so there's it takes faith to start moving but then as you begin to move you develop a competence i always say self-esteem comes from your mommy but yeah. confidence <laughs> comes from 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 competence and that tends to come from you learn that from your father we're talking with father bryce lundgren catholic cowboy priest we'll be right back with more of the bear wasnick adventure People love our EWTN TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you, the show has won four different tally awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air, 
you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the mama bears or the man cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wastick, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. When you go to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel, you get access to all of our free playlists, including hundreds of episodes of the Bear Wozniak adventure, plus the three-year journey through the whole catechism in our Ocean Sunrise Catechism series. And you even get short clips and live streaming of Baron Cindy's Adventures in Paradise videos. Go to YouTube and subscribe to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure channel. Are you still listening? I thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station. Well, you asked for it. Here is more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite you to go uh, see our, our TV show, of course, on EW10. It's also on Prime Video. We have three seasons up on Prime Video. And our fourth season, Long Ride Home Hawaii, is coming out in, uh, in the spring and will also be up on Prime Video. And I uh, also want you to know that if you want to see what, what a cowboy priest looks like, you can go to our Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel and you can subscribe to our newsletter, and you get to get all of our uh, Bear Wozniak adventures mailed to you, or you can go right to YouTube and watch it uh, because you can see the video version the, uh, of the radio show. We're talking with Father Bryce Lundgren, the Catholic Cowboy Priest. His book is The Catholic Cowboy Way. I want to ask you, what does it mean to ride for the brand as a Catholic? What does that mean? Yeah. Well, what does it mean know, just start, as a cowboy? Just yeah, as a cowboy. Start, yeah. I mean, your, your brand, it's the image, it's the symbol of who we're working for you know it's our, it's our it's our symbol of our mission in life it's it's my outfits brand right so i mean in in cowboy world it, it signifies a lot it represents who we are individually mm. collectively sure um mm. and it and, you know so in that sense it gets it gets used in a wider sense than just branding a calf so okay um okay then christian life um I think our Lord used something very similar, and I would say uh, the cross was the brand he rode for. It was mm. the image. You know, he always he was always focused on it. It it was a, a reminder of his mission. You know, it symbolized a lot. So it was mm. a, a physical image in his mind. So um, we kind of you know we kind of just transfer that all into writing mm -hmm. for the brand. Um, I use some other images of. Act, the actual brand. Yeah, well, like but, for example, for example. Well, I use um, what's called the we call it the Rock and Cairo. So mm, cool. take the Cairo, mm. and then we throw a quarter circle under it. Mm. You know, explain and, what, uh, what a Cairo is to the people. Well, know. it's uh, it takes the first two letters of uh, the word Christ in Greek and Christos and melds them into one, the Chi and the Rho. So I'll I'll show you what the rock in Cairo looks like. So if you can see my my if you're on YouTube, here, yeah, can you there see it is. It? Yeah, yeah. So so we put a quarter circle under it. You know that's cowboy, right? Mm, yeah, the rocking. So the rock yeah, Cairo. yeah. And we yeah, use yeah. that in the book. But that's that's like the image of the Catholic cowboy way. It's an image for us that we can, uh, uh, you know, a visual. Like, am I riding for the brand or not? Where am I at? Mm, mm -hmm. You know. And so that brand has a lot of neat. I want to get one. How do I earn one of those belts? How do I earn one of those belts? <laughs> do I have to you come to a roundup? I got this belt? 
You know how I got this belt? The hard way. I know. I know. No one gave it to you. You earned it. No, my grandma felt sorry for me getting bucked off intensely, uh, so she gave me my grandpa's belt. <laughs> that was your grandpa's, not the belt, but the belt buckle. No, I'm I'm joking a little bit. I joke, uh, okay. but but it was my grandpa's belt. This is my grandpa's belt. But wow. I, it, I uh, the it, it was uh, he, we raised Coors barley, malt barley back home, and you mean uh, the stuff that a, Coors is made out of? Yeah, dude, we grow that. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, where the Coors symbol was because it, it got broke up, I put the rock in Cairo. You know, that's the brand. Oh, right. oh really? That's so right cool. Christ. That's my mission in life. Right. Right. Yeah, and people should know. I mean, like when I, I would go, when I had my place up in Montana, when you were entering someone's land, there's that, lo that it's, I'm sure, I think it's true in Wyoming too, you have the long posts and the big log that goes across it. It'd be the name of the ranch, and often there'd be the the branded into there would be the brand for that. So you knew whose land you were going, you were you were yeah. you were on. When when people see you, when people see us, they should they should know. There should be a sense about us that they they know we ride for the brand that we ride for. Mm -hmm. What is it? What does a cowboy mean when he says ride for the brand? That that is a whole lot in that in that oh, term. Yeah. term. Well, it's um, I'm I'm not riding for myself in a way. I'm I'm. I'm working for something greater than myself, you could say, mm -hmm. and I'm I'm also loyal to uh, to the ranch that I'm working for, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm willing to sacrifice myself because I'm part of something bigger than myself. There's a lot there. Well, the keep, loyalty, keep, if you're to sum it up, it's loyalty. Yeah. Well, how about and also when you're riding for the brand, you're riding with some other men. And yeah, if you, and then you're also riding. You're also riding with purpose, and maybe that's just mm, a yes. that's a component of it. Is that it gives it gives me mission. It gives me drive. You yeah, know, that I've got a job to get done, and it's up to me to get her done. Don't you love having a a, a, a job? Isn't it great to have so a purpose in life? Like, yeah, men especially. Mm. We're created to work. I mean, Jesus said, "Hey, dude." My father and I were still. My father works, and I, you know, my father and I were still working, and I, and I think it's good for. In your book, you talk about how God gives you a personality and a purpose to go with it. What do you mean by, what do you mean by that? Yeah, we've all got a we've all got a mission, you know, and uh, you know it. Yeah, I mean, I it, it's your vo it begins with your vocation in a lot of ways. But I even take what a what step is back a vocation? And, what is a vocation? Well, I would I would first speak before I get to vocation. I would speak about and I just kind of coined this term, the universal vocation to discipleship. That's what we're all called to. Mm. And then it's from there I can discern if I'm all in with the Lord in discipleship. Then I can discern what are you calling me to? Marriage, priesthood, consecrated life. Okay, and then and then we we go into one of those. That's our big V vocation, and that's where we really carry out our mission. Mom and mm -hmm. father, if I'm a biological father, your mission is simple: like love your wife and take care of your kids. Mm -hmm. Then we'll talk about the next step. Yes, but God gives us a, a personality. He get, the moment we're moment we're conceived, even if we're uh, you know, God is able to bring so much good out of even bad, uh, even if we were conceived in a rape. The good thing that comes out of it was you, was that person. In the moment of that that horrible deed, God still honors that 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 human life that was conceived and infuses at that very moment a spiritual, rational soul that's unique, a unique personhood, unique personality. I, I was with a friend of ours, Lono, the other day, about asking about his new baby, he's eight month, six months old or eight months old. What's her personality? Because every baby, ha I mean, from the moment they're born, they have a personality. And these personality traits, these, these, these natural gifts and skills and desires will lead you into your purpose. It becomes, it's not like you got to resist and deny and suppress. That's it. That's what God's given you to do, the job he's got for you to do. Yeah, and it's 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 so true. And our Lord leads us there. Disciple, so I'm I'm like, discipleship leads us to holiness. Mm. And what is holiness? Holiness is becoming fully the man or woman God has created you to be. Okay, mm. and so it 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 involves our personality, but holiness is being fully you, right? Be fully me, and that's different and unique. So I'm like, we you know, and that that it takes our Lord to lead us to holiness, and we. Mm. We yes. get in trouble when we start comparing ourselves to other. I should be like him. I should be like her. 
No, it should be like me, who God's mm -hmm. created me to be, you know? And that's not prideful. It's just being fully who he's created me to be. I call that holiness in the book. Beautiful. And, uh, and we, we all desire that. And, and I, so I'm, I kind of, I kind of, I'm all about, we're called to be saints, but what's that look like? I'm not mother Teresa or John Paul II. I'm Bryce, father Bryce. Mm -hmm. Okay. So holiness in this life being fully who we're created to be. And then sanctity, that's after you die. <laughs> well, we're working, we're working on, yeah, holiness also means, the word means to be wholly set apart. It means, and it's one way of saying holiness, you are set apart to be God's vessel, uh, like a vessel in the temple or in the, or in the church. But, but when, I, when I was a young man and I experienced the power of the Holy Spirit when I was 19, uh, and I surrendered all to God, um, I was still confused. Well, does this mean I have to go do this and I have to go do that? It really means you're going to be more. You, you it, it's like being a tree whose sap never rises, uh, but when you give your life to the Lord, that the life and the nutrients come of the Holy Spirit come in, and you begin to bear fruit. The way you're, you're not going to. If you're an olive tree, you're not going to be bearing plums. You know, God gave you um, your unique personality and gifts, and to be fully in God's will. Is first of all to be on the adventure of a lifetime. Secondly, Amen. you get to see God do stuff, and third, you don't get to see God do stuff when you're not in His will. He's over there, and you're over here, and then also it lets you become fully who you are. Father, what's Amen. the name of your book? The Catholic Cowboy Way: Finding Peace and Purpose on the Brown Called Life. Uh, finding the Catholic, it's the Catholic Cowboy Way: Finding Meaning, Peace, and Purpose. Peace on the Bronx Called Life. On the Bronx Called Life. We're talking to Father Bryce Lundgren. You can go to Amazon right now or go to Sophia Institute and you can pre-order that book. And I just, I'm just going to throw it out there. If you guys, any of you would like for to contact Father Bryce Lundgren, where can, where can they find you? Is it okay if you, if they? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I do have a blog. It's called WyomingCatholicCowboys.com. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's an email address on there. You're super welcome. I, I love getting random yeah, emails. I just think with my new book, uh, my new book is 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? And wow. if, I just think hopefully sometime, someplace, every now and then you and I can show up together and do do, yeah. do a couple talks together. Yeah, but yeah. We're gonna, by the way, we should just let everybody know Father Bryce and his good friend are coming out here to Hawaii to join us in about a month or two, and we're going to go surfing. And I know Father is a, you're a stand-up paddler, but have you surfed in the ocean? I forget. No, man, this is, oh, we're wild. gonna We're going to have that. We're going to get him on some bucking bronco waves out here. <laughs> Thank you, Father Bryce. Until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Thanks for listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell. 